This is five on your side at four. Focused on you. As we go on the air at four, we are following major breaking news. A chain reaction accident has shut down both directions of Interstate 55 in central Illinois. It's massive and involves about 20 commercial vehicles and another 40 to 60 passenger vehicles. Again, both directions of the interstate south of Divernon and just north of Farmersville are shut down. We're talking about mile marker 76. This crash happened just before 11 and unlike winter crashes caused by ice or snow. This one was caused by high winds and extensive blowing dust from freshly plowed farm fields. Police say that dust brought the visibility down to almost zero. Thanks for being here at four. I'm Kay Quinn. Illinois State Police held a news conference in the last hour to update us on the crash. Five on your side's Mercedes McKay joins us now from near Divern in Illinois with more on what they said. Mercedes. Okay, we are along a service road next to Interstate 55. Where we are right now, this is as close to the crash scene as we could get. We're actually near mile marker 80, which is near the end of the crash scene. I'm going to step aside here so you can see those IDOT trucks behind me. They are redirecting traffic, and I think you can tell by our live shot right now just how strong these winds are. It was actually difficult for our photographer, Tony Chambers, to even open and close the doors here. So the combination of winds, loose topsoil, and freshly plowed fields is what police believe caused the initial dust storm. Once that started, drivers were heading into low visibility. Police say the first crash that caused the chain reaction was going northbound, and it happened just before 11 near mile marker 76. 20 commercial vehicles and between 40 to 60 passenger cars were involved. Two semi trucks also caught fire from the crash. More than 30 people were sent to the hospital with injuries. There are also reports of multiple fatalities, but police couldn't give us an exact number yet. Illinois State Police said the conditions have to be just right to have a situation like this one. The excessive winds and then the, the loose dirt on top of the on top of the farm fields and depending on which way the wind direction is blowing and things like that to cause near, if you will, extreme low visibility like a whiteout condition, but a brownout condition due to the fact that it's dirt blowing across the roadway. Has it happened before in Illinois? The answer is yes, um, but it's it's not something that is extremely common and nothing in my 24 year career that I can recall having something as severe as this. There were multiple agencies from fire to police involved in this. Now, the police are still working to clear that crash scene on I-55. That's why Illinois State Police tell us it probably won't be open until tomorrow afternoon. They're asking drivers to stay clear of this area at this time. Again, still really dangerous winds out here, Kay. As you can tell by our live shot right now, there will be another press conference at 430, where we'll have more information for you at 5. Live in Divernon, Mercedes McKay, 5 on your side. Frightening situation there. Thank you so much, Mercedes. Just hours ago, we learned about more departures from the office of St. Louis Circuit Attorney Kim Gardner. That means there's now just one prosecutor who's assigned to hundreds of violent felony cases. The most recent prosecutor to resign is at the center of a contempt case that could result in jail time, a fine, or both for him and Gardner. Five on your sites, Christine Byers was first to report on this most recent resignation earlier today. Christine, what new reaction do you have? You've been talking with judges today. Exactly, Kay. So basically, other than legal filings, you rarely ever hear from a sitting judge, let alone all of them collectively from a single circuit. Today, they issued a statement expressing their concerns given all of the resignations. Assistant Circuit Attorney Chris Desolitz confirmed to me this morning that he is stepping down. He was just in court last week to explain why he missed a trial and a subsequent hearing on the same case. The judge noted Desolates had 104 violent felony cases assigned to him and scheduled a contempt of hearing for Desolates and Gardner for later this month. Also today, we obtained an email from Gardner and she wrote confirming Alex Polta left her office Lex last week. He also missed a recent murder trial. Both Desolates and Polta blamed their absences on medical issues. 
In a statement today, the judges wrote, more recent departures from the circuit attorney's office, leaving fewer attorneys to prosecute hundreds of serious cases on the trial docket, are deeply concerning to the judges of the 22nd Judicial Circuit. At a rally over the weekend, Gardner addressed the staffing issue in her office. Like I said, I don't care if I have nobody in my office because it's about doing the right things. And if you stand in silence and you sit there and watch the show and think it's okay, it's me here now today, it's gonna be you next and your family next. Now, Gardner's spokeswoman issued a statement just two hours ago, which read in part, while we have had some high profile departures, the office continues to seek justice for the people of the city of St. Louis. The CAO has made adjustments to the workload to ensure all cases are covered and is actively recruiting talented attorneys. So, Christine, what do we know about the prosecutor who remains in the violent felonies unit? There's just like one left, right? Exactly. So his name is Sai Chiguropati, and earlier this year, he experienced a medical emergency in court, and it was his third medical emergency of the year. So much pressure on these attorneys to, to do so much. Exactly. I mean, they at least have about 100 cases per attorney. That just seems like an impossible assignment. All right, thank you so much, Christine Byers. We'll have more coming up at five and six. Well, just a few hours ago, a St. Louis County judge granted a temporary restraining order preventing an emergency rule on transgender care from taking effect in Missouri. The rule issued by State Attorney General Andrew Bailey would have required all new patients to undergo counseling before beginning medical interventions. The restraining order is in effect until May 15th unless extended by the court. Our political editor Mark Maxwell will have reaction from a parent of a transgender high school student coming up tonight at 5 and 6. The DMV inside St. Louis City Hall is closing. The city's collector of revenue shared the news on Twitter this morning. We're working to learn the reason for the closure. We'll let you know when we do. There are other DMVs you can use throughout the St. Louis area. The DMV inside City Hall closes May 18th. Right now, Cardinal Nation is in mourning. On Sunday morning, we got the news former Cardinal player, broadcaster, and St. Louis son Mike Shannon passed away at the age of 83. His death marks the end of an era for generations of fans. Each and every one of us who heard his voice felt like we knew him, even if we never met him. Sports director Frank Cusimano joins me now. He was your friend. You covered the Cardinals alongside him for years. What did he mean to you, Frank? Well, he was just so much fun, and he always called you big boy when you talked to him. <laughs> And no matter if you were 6'6 six, six or 5'6, big boy. I remember one time, Kay, real quick, we were in an elevator, Trey Wingo and I, it was 110 degrees, and Mike comes in with that classic members only jacket, and Trey says, Mike, what's the story? Why are you wearing the members only? It's 110. And he says, Wingo, you only wish you could have a jacket like this. <laughs> we just laughed so hard. Oh, he was a lot oh, of fun. He was, yeah, priceless. So his career, Kay, was more about energy than eloquence. His knowledge of the game was off the charts, too. And we heard Mike Shannon for 50 years on 50,000 red hot watts on KMOX radio. The great Cardinal passed away yesterday and everybody has a favorite Mike Shannon story. Mike would be the first to admit that he had to learn on the job. And the beginning was a little rocky, but he quickly carved his niche. His calls were done with passion and precision and sometimes with some good humor. Let's hear one of them now and then let's hear from one of the greatest broadcasters of all time. Say, take a little whiff of that, big boy. Give it to him, big boy. Give it to him. If you were a baseball fan and didn't know much about St. Louis, you're passing through on a business trip <laughs> and you heard that, you might be amused by it, but you would say, well, that guy isn't a polished announcer. But the St. Louis fan would say, you just don't get it. Yes, we all got it here in St. Louis. Mm. And in terms of popularity, what Cardinal besides Stan Musial had more of it? I mean, he's right there with Ozzie, Gibby, Lou, and Whitey, and a few others. The thing about him, too, and Bob told me this this morning, that Mike Shannon could never be Vince Scully or Jack Buck, but they could never be Mike Shannon. Oh, wow. That's such a good point. Yeah. And you know what I forgot un until really reading more about his life? 
was that he was a huge high school baseball and football star, right? I mean, he, his roots in this town go so far back, so yeah, deep. Someone who's followed like high school sports here for like 40 years. I'm telling you, he's one of the 10 greatest high school athletes we've ever had. That's amazing. He broke me. scoring records as a basketball player. Of course, he was drafted in baseball. And then in football, he went to Mizzou on a football scholarship to play quarterback. He could have been an NFL quarterback, we believe. That is a, a, yeah. That's unbelievable. And you know, then he would go on to this, have this amazing life and career with the Cardinals. There will never be another Fantastic. like Mike Shannon. No, yeah. you're right. Thank you so much, Frank.